a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. Low volatility ETFs, that's what we're going to hear about now with our ETF research director, Nina Mishra. So is this particularly timely because we're in a high volatility stock market? Exactly. Investors have been pouring a lot of money into these low volatility ETFs uh, because they tend to perform better than the broader market when markets are very volatile. And markets have been very volatile yeah. and probably volatility will stay elevated because trade tensions and also global growth concerns mm -hmm. uh, in the wake of uh, these trade tensions. Uh, now, these ETFs, they underperform during very strong bull markets. Uh, but over the longer period of time, it has been seen in all markets studied that lower risk stocks produced better risk adjusted returns over the long term. And uh, that is kind of not consistent with traditional finance theories mm -hmm. uh, because traditional finance theories say that investors demand higher return for taking on high risk. Yes. Uh, but uh, this low volatility anomaly of lower risk stocks outperforming higher risk uh, stocks uh, was seen and uh, these ETFs they tend to cap they want to capitalize on that anomaly and the reason behind this anomaly is that investors normally tend to chase hot risky stocks yes. and they tend to in ignore uh, cheap uh, low risk stocks stocks but that also means that if too many investors start chasing these lower risk stocks, then they, maybe they will not stay cheap for a very long oh, time. Okay. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that may happen over the long term, but I think in the shorter term, these ETFs will continue to do well during volatile market environments. So just to clarify, these low volatility ETFs carry lower risk as well? So they hold stocks that have lower risk than the broader market. Okay, so maybe a good way to leverage a little bit of risk there uh, and, and keep it modified for yourself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so you brought, as you always do, some examples of uh, some of these ETFs. First, the iShares Edge MSI, uh, MSCI uh, ETF, it's a long name. Minimum. I'm just going to say USMV, the ticket. <laughs> so these are the two most popular ETFs that we are discussing. Low volatility, or at times called minimum volatility. This is minimum volatility ETF, but basically the same concept. But the way they approach in, uh, constru to construct their portfolio is very different. Uh, so that is what I wanted to highlight. Uh, the ticket, as you mentioned, is USMV. It is the most popular low volatility ETF with 31 billion in assets under management. Uh, it is also one of the cheapest, charges 15 basis points. It has 212 holdings and it selects those holdings uh, to construct a portfolio mm -hmm. that in the aggregate has lower volatility than the broader market. So it looks not only uh, at the volatility of individual holdings, but also correlations between those holdings. So the aggregate portfolio has low volatility. Now, if you want to learn more about the CTF, you can go to the quote page on zax.com. You can read uh, our articles, you can look at the report, and you can also go to the external homepage of iShares webpage for this particular ETF, and you can look at other details, including the holdings of this ETF. So low risk stocks like Newmont, Waste Management, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Visa, these are the top holdings. Looking at the sex sector exposure, information technology has highest weight, about 17%, followed by financials and consumer staples, healthcare. Now these financials, consumer staples, healthcare, these are all lower risk sectors. And within information technology, probably it selects 
stocks which have lower risk to construct the portfolio. Okay, because technology itself is kind of volatile. Uh, yes, at the moment, so so. many many stocks. Most, or you can say, most tech stocks are volatile, but not all. Some are rather stable, mm. and then because it looks at the portfolio construction too. So that is why, if you include those tech stocks in the portfolio, because due to their correlations, the portfolio has lower risk than the broader market. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> then Invesco has the S and P 500 low volatility ETF. That was a pretty easy name. Yes. Uh, so this is the second most popular low volatility ETF, ticker is SPLV. Uh, it holds 100 S&P 500 companies, which, has, which have exhibited lowest volatility over the past 12 months. So a different approach, it considers only the volatility of individual holdings mm. and selects 100 from S&P 500 stocks, which have the lowest volatility. It's slightly more expensive, a 25 basis points expense ratio, but this is also pretty popular with 12 billion in assets under management. Again, to look at this ETF, you can go to the code page on zax.com and the web page for this ETF, the Invesco web page, you can learn more details about this ETF and also look at its holding. Uh, now, in terms of individual holdings, Republic Services, Nextera Energy, Eversource Energy, a lot of energy stocks there. And you can also look at the sector exposure. So not surprising, utilities, about 25% of the portfolio, financials, about 22, 21%, real estate, 21% consumer staples, about 10% of the portfolio. Okay, year to date performance. So, uh, as you can see, both these ETFs have done significantly better than the S&P 500 uh, ETF. Uh, the Invesco pr product uh, has done a little better than iShares product, but their performance is almost the same and significantly, significantly better than the S&P 500 ETF. And over the past five years? I wanted to look at the longer term performance as well. And you can see that both of these have, in fact, significantly outperformed the S&P 500 ETF over the past five years. These ETFs, the low volatility ETFs, they are up about 85%, whereas the S&P 500 uh, is up about 65% during this period. Very interesting. That's very impressive performance. Yeah, mm -hmm. considering what we're talking about sure. here. Do you own either of these two? Uh, so I do own USMV in the ETF investor portfolio that I manage. Okay, thanks for the information. Don't forget more ETF information on our website in the ETF section of Zax.com. Use the funds tab in the top toolbar. It will help guide you there. And also don't forget to check out the podcast page. Nina does a very informative uh, and interesting ETF Spotlight podcast uh, every week where she talks about a wide variety of topics from the, the ETF space. And I'm sure you'll find that interesting. If you go all the way to the bottom of the homepage and click on the word podcast, it will take you to that. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruflo.